I just want to say thank you so very much for giving uh, me. Is your microphone on? Yeah. Would you? Uh, yeah. Thank you for getting a little closer. <laughs> thank you for giving me the opportunity um, to share my story here today. Um, <clears throat> I am not certified, educated, d diplomas, and and everything else. Um, I had a lot of stats. I know a lot of stats, like everybody else does. Um, and I'm not going to go off of my statement. <laughs> um, but I will keep this short. Uh, I, I want to fill in a few blanks from what I've heard today. There's been some great information put out here. Um, every day, I speak with and deal with uh, people who are in active addiction, uh, people in recovery, and families of those in recovery. And a few different things that, that I've seen that, that maybe didn't get covered here that I feel is important to keep in mind are um, the cost, it's been said many times, um, that heroin is cheap. But believe it or not, um, I believe a lot of, especially parents, don't understand how cheap. And I think that's very important for them to know. Um, parents don't realize that when you give your kid $20 to go to the movies on a Friday night, you could have easily bought heroin for them with that $20. Um, and I think that's really important to, to get out there. Uh, <laughs> another thing that I know, because I live in a very small community. My county is, on, is under 30,000, Carroll County, Ohio. I live in Carrollton. We have a small town. We don't even have a Walmart. <laughs> no hospital. Um, a lot of our law enforcement went to school with my girls. Uh, my oldest, Miranda, um, is 26, has already done four years in the Navy, and now has um, her bachelor's in business. And one of the things that I see happening in our little town that frustrates me is, you were saying disconnect, our officers have worked so diligently to arrest people that they know are bringing this in, just to have them go in front of our judges and our judges to slap these people on the wrist and send them right back out the door. And I can't tell you how often I get these boys that I consider sons because I've watched them grow up. People say, oh, they're terrible. They're not doing anything at all and, and give them such a bad rap. And, and that frustrates me because I watch them. They're busting their butts, but what do you expect them to do when they keep arresting the same people and sending them in front of these judges for the judges to turn around and put them right back out on the street? The boy that sold my daughter the heroin that killed her just recently went back in front of a judge for his fourth offense for trafficking heroin. Fourth time he's been arrested for this, and he was given five months. How's that possible? That's so frustrating. It frustrates, frustrates me, of course, but I can't even imagine what our law enforcement deals with in that in that situation. You know, these are things that have to be dealt with. And then lastly, what do I know? <laughs> Miranda Ray changed the channel or something. I know that when you find your 21 year old on the floor, blue, bruises already on her forehead and her nose from slamming into the sink because she died so fast that that sticks with you for the rest of your life. 
that when you do CPR, praying for someone to show up and help your child, and your arms are burning because you've done it for so long, waiting on help. And you want to quit, but you can't quit. It's your child. That's your baby. You can't stop. The sound of my air going into her lungs, that crackling and popping that I still hear in my nightmares. We have to put a face to this. We have to help these kids. When they say, I want to quit, I need help. We can't say to them, I'm sorry. Give us two, three weeks and get back to us. This legislation, Kara, gives me a little hope. Please, please do something to help our children. Thank you.